My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and um, I've got a question, so uh, a, a, a point. Uh, so this is from Yam R1M. I know who this is, Richard, you know who you are. <laughs> I know Richard actually, like, personally, so it's not just a guy who comments a lot or whatever. So, he says, okay, I do need to pick you up on one point. Ooh, cool. Sweat volume and carbon deposits. It makes no difference to the amount of air being pulled into the cylinder. Right. If the volume of the cylinder is 100 cc and you have 1 cc or 10 cc's worth of carbon on the piston. So remember what we're saying. We're saying 1 or 10. doesn't matter. It makes zero difference to the amount of air pulled into the cylinder. This is because it is on top of the piston sitting in an area of a combustion chamber in a free space. So if you have a 100cc cylinder with a 10cc combustion chamber, then a 1cc worth of carbon will only reduce the combustion chamber volume at TDC. It will always still pull in 100cc of air into the cylinder. Right. So let's talk about this and something else, which is how dome pistons work to increase compression ratios. That's not true. Uh, how... Now, how much carbon buildup do we actually will we see? It's minimal, uh, so it is not going to add any p more power. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not bothered about that. Uh, it is sort of self-regulating to wrong to as I'm picking him up on it. Fuck it, and as carbon buildups uh, then builds up, then the rough edges of the carbon get hot and burn off usually. Anyway, so you will see some carbon but in most four stroke engines it's minimal yeah so there's this self-regulating thing where in a sense what happens is the carbon builds up but as it builds up it's not very good at sticking to itself in a sense it makes these weird structures and then them structures become unstable and burn away it burn away isn't the thing because it's carbon it's not bothered about the temperature so much it's literally more about it just gets blasted away by the incoming air it just you know it's the rough edges kind of syndrome so it's self-regulating in that kind of sense um and just ends up in your exhaust stream and buff out and it gets stuck to your exhaust instead um the reason why the heat matters is because these things um don't condense you know or there's less con condensation at lower temp at higher temperatures you know what i mean because uh, you're giving them energy so they, they don't tend to stick to each other so you can think about grinding sparks. Grinding sparks spark out and they'll bounce and they'll do all these things, but when they cool and start to coalesce, they will bunch up and you get these little bits where, oh my god, look at all that carb, all them iron filings all starting to fuse together, that kind of stuff. I don't know why this keeps on doing the zippy bar reloading thing, but whatever. So let's talk about this whole compression malarkey. It's going to be a bit of messing around here, but what I've got here is this is actually a, another model for something else and um pissing around doing but i say pissing around doing it's actually for it's actually work <laughs> someone is paying me to do something can you believe it so um what we've got here is basically a piston rod crank setup in a thingy and then we've got a volume this is a total volume thing i ha it doesn't animate it so i have to just press rebuild and what it does is it basically sticks that to it you know what i mean wherever we stick it so what I do is, is we'll get this model, and what we can measure here is we can measure the total volume of everything from there, and when it's at TDC, and I've put a little dome on it if you can see there. I've just made it transparent so you can see what's going on, but basically that's what you can see. And at any part in the stroke, we can basically just rebuild it like that. And then what we can do is we can say to SolidWorks, how big is that? And it'll say, oh, at the right, it's tiny, there's not much I can zoom in or something, but it says there that this is 272 and I'll forget the decimal points, forget them, unless they're literally 9.9 .9 or something. So 2.72 cubic centimetres. This is a big cylinder. This is a this was actually the Alpha Dan block mock-up that I used. So what we can do is we can take two measurements. If we turn this whole thing round and put it there, and then I, with my little finger, trying to hold the microphone in place, do that and that. All I'm doing here is I'm just locking them together. There, I'm just saying, make them two surfaces parallel, like that. So now I can't, I can't move it. Look, if I try and grab the the crank or the piston, I can't move anything. Right, 
I'll go back to the model. I can't move anything. Look, you see, it's all frozen now. And the reason why is it's the, the computer is keeping that surface and that surface, those two surfaces parallel to each other. And obviously, if this tries to, it's locked to the pin. So if it tries to rotate, it's not parallel. So it keeps it locked. So this is basically our bottom dead center. All right. And then what I do is I go to uh, our sweat volume there, our sweat volume indicator there, selected in blue. I go evaluate and I say, right, tell me what the volume is. And the volume is, that it's the mass because it, I give it a, a material. But it's basically, it's, it's assuming it's basically water. It's saying it's 1,172 cc, 0.22, we'll ignore the 0.22, well, we'll round down to 1,172. And then what we do is we can do the opposite. So I've got all this, I've got this all written down already, right? So we're going to use, I nick this offline. Um, it gives you compression ratio, so this is easy to follow. And uh, we're going to write 1,172 in there in a second. I've actually become organized and got this pre-ready. So then what we can do, I could give this um, configurations, but I just, I just can't bother. It's so easy just to go, right, sod that off. Now I can move it again so you can see what I'm doing. Now we're going back up to TDC. I can do the exact same thing again. I can get that surface on the rod, that surface there, and tell them to make parallel. There we go. You see, this is basically just working out its life. It's working out all the iterations that could be giving me the one that's probably the right one. So now you can see we've got our, this is our clearance volume, right? That's basically what your piston does and all the rest of it. Fantastic. And then what we can do is we can do exactly the same thing again. So we get our sweat volume. We go to, tell us how big it is. And it says it's 53.43. That's in the middle. So we can just ignore that. So it's 53, right? Oh, that's volume. Sorry, it's there. It's volume. Same thing when it's doing mass based on just, say, water, uh, which is just its default. One to one is what it's working out. So 53 cc. So then if we go to our thing here and we add that in, we've got 53 cc for V1, which is just the clearance at the top. And then for the total, total volume, it's 1172 because it's 53 in this bit and then it's 119 there in our sweat volume. Fantastic, right? So your engine pumps this 1192, right? If we are saying 100% volumetric efficiency, no, um, you know, we're talking mathematically, no uh, inertial filling, nothing, right? So when this goes down, it's moving from this line to this line. So all it can pump is this. This is what it'll pump out. It'll leave this as residue. It exchanges the gases, but basically this volume is left. And then when it draws in, it draws in just the volume it can displace. This is what it can pump, right? So this volume up here is just, it matters when we try and, you know, the like I said, the air expands to this 1172, but it's a bit lower than volumetric if you're going for 100% VE. But whatever. The fact of the matter is, is we're pumping 1192. Fantastic. So then we just do what it says here, right? So we would get V1, which is 53. We would plus it to this one, 1119. And we divide it by our V1 again. So it's basically, you're trying to get the blue and you're trying to squish it into the red. And that's why we've got these two numbers. So we can say the top number is 1172. The top number, this is these two added together, and then the bottom number is we divide it by this. This gives us a number, right? And that number in this case is 22.113, right? This is the compression ratio. This is uh, the scale factor. We're getting this volume and we're scaling it down to this. Fantastic. So let's just say for argument's sake, right, that we want to... And I'm going to do this big so we're not messing around really with decimal points. Uh, we want to add some carbon to this. Right? So we'll get rid of our parallel thing again. We can move it back down to the bottom. And we can go exactly the same thing. We'll just select that bit. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong thing. <laughs> um, there and there. We just make them again just to make it so it goes flat. Like you see, it moves everything. That's wonderful. Thank you. And then once we've done that, we need to rebuild. So this goes all the way down to the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some carbon in. Now, 
I can't add carbon adding carbon to the piston will actually change this volume. What I've done instead is I've just removed that that volume in there is removed. So if we oh, if we open this as a part, oops, no, not do that. Open it as a part, you can see that basically I've just removed a lump. It's a big lump, but I'm you want, go to extremes to show how something works. I, I hope you all get that concept. So basically, what we're going to do is, and I've made it so that it's in the middle, so when we squish it, we end up in our combustion chamber kind of thing. But we've moved that big lump there. Yeah, that's what a piece of carbon would fill because we're trying to measure this volume. This is all just due to the way I've done. I've done the models. Oh, don't show again. Keep changing the assembly sod it. Um, so there. So you can see that that's where our lump of carbon would live. Just it's a big. It's a big lump, but I'm trying to get big numbers so you can see the difference. So what we do is we measure the volume of this. Now this should be different to our uh, 1172, right? Because this is this is the total. We've nibbled a bit out of it. So if I say right, I want that volume, and I want to go evaluate, and I want to go mass properties. Instead, we've got 1167.97. So that is so close. <laughs> I want to call that 1168 because it, it practically is. Right? I could shave less half a millimetre off this and it'd go above that. Right? So we'll call that 1168. We're not really cheating. We are literally on the, the button there. Right? And you can argue the toss if you think that's a, a problem, but whatever. So 1168. So if we go back to our thingy, uh, we'll get rid of these numbers and then I'll show the new numbers in a minute when we get the other one. So 1168... And then what happens is is that we have to compress this. So we go to our thing again. We get rid of our parallel thing that's locking everything in the position. I should have done configs really. Configs are basically just you just tap one thing. It's this thing here. It's this tree. We just tap one thing TDC and then BDC. But I didn't bother, and now I'm regretting it. So <laughs> what we do is we do this again, where we oh I want my, why am I keep on pressing space bar? It's because I'm not reaching my little finger far enough. There we go. And then mate, like that, it'll do the same jiggle de poker it does. There we go. It's parallel. Fantastic. Great. It's locked in place. This is just to make sure that we are at TDC and BDC. That's why I'm doing that whole mating thing. I could try and line it by eye, but we want it precise. You know what I mean? So now what I do is I go to swept volumes. And now I go to evaluate. And now I go to properties. And then we get 49.2 or 49 where I come from. You call it 50, really, if you wanted to, but 49. 49.2, we're going with the same rules we have as usual, rounding it to the closest whole number. So 49, right, so we can go and fill that in in our thing now. So instead, we've got a bit of a bit of carbon, if you saw that up here or not, well, a bit of carbon, <laughs> a bit. And then we've got these numbers. So we've got 49, right, that was right, wasn't it? Was it 49? It was 49, wasn't it? Am I going insane? Uh, last properties. 49.2. Yeah, yeah. I'm, off. I'm just going insane. So we've got 49. That's our clearance. We've got 1119. Uh, and then when we measured we measured it originally, we got 1168. Right? So that's our total volume. And if you do the same thing, you get a compression ratio of 23.83. Now, for those who can't remember, our original compression ratio, our original, oh, bloody Nora. I nearly, nearly pulled this off. Nearly pulled this off. So we started without carbon at 22.113. Our new one with carbon has gone to 23.83. So if we're rounding, that's 22. This is nearly 24. We've gone up an awful lot. So, what and the reason well, you think, well, why? Why would this make a difference? It's because this volume, this bit of carbon, makes not much difference to this volume, but this bit of carbon makes a lot of difference to this volume. In other words, we're scaling something big down to something small, but the volume of this doesn't scale. The carbon doesn't get smaller. Let's just say it's, it's 20 to 1, basically, the carbon isn't getting 20 to 1 times smaller, but the volumes we're dealing with are. Right? These volumes from one cylinder to another are getting 20 times smaller.
but the carbon's in exactly the same. So when it's a big cylinder, it doesn't make much difference. When it's a small cylinder, in a sense, you know, when, it, when it's a small volume, it makes a lot of difference. It makes a big difference to the points where we've, got, we've gone up two points. This is quite a lot. Now, you might think, well, Matt, that piece of carbon was huge. But if it's a lot of carbon over a lot of the surface, and this is something they have to worry about with diesels, right? Um, if you spread this, you know, if, even if you look at our model here, it might look like a big bit of carbon. But if you start smearing that out, you know what I mean? If you really do start to smear that out, and especially with diesels because they have bigger surface areas because they've got the dip in them, they've got the, the the combustion ball, you can actually smear that out over that surface area. In it, 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 you're getting quite close. If you get I me, mean, it seems ridiculous at first. In this example, it seems ridiculous, but the fact of the matter is, it's not. So, what I was saying was, is it was saying it eats away at your combustion chamber. If he meant your combustion ratio gets not eats away at your combustion chamber, eats away at your compression ratio. If he means that your compression ratio is getting smaller, which is what we mean when we say eat away, no, 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 your compression ratio gets higher, and it can actually get quite high quite quick, right? These things can be an issue, and it's actually calm deposits can lead to pre-ignition and detonation scenarios. A lot of the times, detonation, right? Where if you go from an okay fuel to a shitty fuel, that can make a big difference. Because some shittier fuels, not only are they lower octane, but they also can be just shittier quality and soot formation and, you know, blah, 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 can be, a, you know, a bad thing. But this generally means that as you, um, one of the, 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 you might think, well, as engines age and stuff, they get more calm deposits. There's a lot more blow by with oil that then starts cooking on pistons and valves and shit like this. Does that mean that the older an engine gets, the more likely it is to detonate? Well, you see, this is a, a two sided story because as you increase the wear between your piston, and this is just by accident, as you increase the wear between your piston and cylinder, you might have more blow by to you know induce oil into here so it blows it burns more carbon gets more calm deposits however you have more blow by so when you come to your compression stroke you're actually losing pressure around your cylinder which means that you're not compressing as much gases which means that your compression temperature your compression temperatures are getting as high so it's again it's almost like a self-regulating thing where the sloppier an engine gets the um the worst these things can get you know what i mean so then people might ask well is it then worth shining pistons up what we consider shiny and what piston and what um carbon will stick to you're not really in the realms of shiny if you had a very 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 keyed up rough surface then yes but pistons generally don't look like that anyway um so shining up pistons and stuff yeah you know what i mean it's the reason why you get a lot more deposits on your piston than you do your, say, your cylinder head is because your your piston is very good at wicking away the heat, so it's more likely to condense on the piston, you know what I mean? Um, where your cylinder head, because you've got your exhaust going through it, it it's, it stays relatively hot and the, the cooling happens up above later on, you know what I mean, with your water cooling and all the rest of it. Um, but your piston being washed by a cylinder, uh, by the intake, air coming in full of fuel and stuff like that uh, helps some of this soot and carbon and shit condense onto the surface. Because condensing basically just means going from, just say, gaseous state back down to a liquid and a solid. You, know, you can just literally, well, yeah, it's just vapour condensing onto a surface. And then however those crystals grow and form, like carbon's a bit of a funny one. It kind of skips the liquid stage altogether. Is it? It's not sublimation. It's the other one. I can't remember which one it's called. Is it sub? It might be sublimate, where you go from solid to gas. But regardless, whichever one it is, <laughs> whichever one it is, um, carbon just it tends to you know build up deposits like that. Soot is actually used for burning solids. That's usually one of the problems where soot formation is a big thing. Um, but regardless, so what does this mean if we go back to the original thing? is that Richard is talking more, uh, seems to be talking first more about how much air you draw in. Right. So a pump will only displace what, it will only pump and move what it pumps. 
This isn't free space, nothing's free. The air that's in here will expand to fill this entire volume. What matters is density. So in a sense, how blue, you know, you could say, you could say for instance, uh, this part of the cylinder is, oops, no you can't, because that's not even the actual picture. Uh, you could say this cylinder is, oh for God's sake, why is it not, why is it not doing it? Do it, do it, do it, do it. Why is it not doing it? No, oh, it doesn't want to do it. That's weird. If I just do it some other colour, does it do it? Uh, why is it not? Oh, it's not, it's not wanting to play. Okay, yeah, yeah. Why is it not wanting to bloody... Am I going mental? It's not wanting to... There, all right, we'll do it. Is it... Oh, I don't know what's going on here. I will do it. Right, fine. Stop it. Stop it being ridiculous. But just say if like this bit of the cylinder here was less dense, and we use like a lighter blue, and that's what I was going to go for, like that. You know, and then just say if the, these colours were densities. If this is, this, there's no such thing as this being less dense and this not being. This will just spread out. You know what I mean? And fill the whole thing. So, um, a a cylinder will fill what a cylinder fills uh, due to its displacement so if you have v1 here and it just say this didn't fire at all yeah if this cylinder didn't fire you would have 49 cc's of volume in this this cylinder will draw in a hundred and 1119 cc through the ports it will then push out 119 cc now it could be red smoke and you're drawing in blue smoke and it'll come out as purple because it'll mix the two together, you know, kind of thing. The gas is always exchanged, but that, this is the whole point. This is the whole point of overlap because just imagine it went bang there and this red stuff is now just exhaust gases that expands to push the piston down. If you just evacuate 1119, puff out the cylinder, you're going to have this 49cc left of exhaust gases, but that's the whole point of overlap. We want to flood in air to make sure we get rid of this last bit at TDC. We want to just make sure we get rid of all of it. Get rid of it. It's not completely, you know, it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, suck in air, and there's this bit at the top. It's mixed. But we want to try and purge all of it out, right? So we want the exhaust valve just about to close, open the intake valve, so we fill the cylinder with fresh mixture, and then when we draw in this. But you can do the other way, in a sense, you want valve overlap for maximum performance, right? So you're trying to get as much in as you can. But the other way around is when you want to do basically your cylinder system is designed to do this for maximum performance, that actually makes you shittily efficient at other RPMs. So you might actually have an exhaust regas circulation to put a bit of exhaust gas in to temper everything down, reduce fuel consumption, but try and, in a sense, keep a bit of that old exhaust product. Well, you put it back in, you know what I mean? You're trying to extract a bit more energy out of it instead of just putting fresh air in. Because fresh air, you are going to get nothing out of because fresh air is at the ambient temperature and an engine cannot run at ambient temperature. It just can't. So um, the interchange, the, obviously, it's, this is like trying to visualise exactly what a two-stroke does. There's always this mix of gases and you'll never get a solid number. It'll be different, slightly different all the time. But a bit of carbon on the piston will change how much you draw in, right? That's just the way it goes. Because on this I we haven't with the number that's missing from here is the volume of the carbon. You know what I mean? This was fifty what was this before? This is this is fifty three. That fifty three cc, which is four cc, is the carbon, right? The piston will still draw in what it is because these numbers, you say, well, it's drawing in 1119, so that makes my point. But that 1119 is because we're just getting this number and retract, taking 49 from this number to get 1119. That, in a sense, is a sanity check, but it's not the volume of the swept cylinder. The swept cylinder's volume has reduced because you've got this giant bit of fucking carbon in there that isn't air. It now can't have that as air. And you say, well, it has it as air up here, but it doesn't. This is just mathematically. Mathematically, this is the way it works out. Regardless, your compression ratios aren't working properly. You're actually gaining high compression because you've added the carbon to the swept volume in a sense 
where it makes a big difference to your um, clearance volume. Hope that makes sense. Um, that Richard's got another bit of the rest of his comment, but this bit here we will deal with in a completely different video because that's a bit more complicated. Um, and he makes a good point, and then I also have a contention with that. But this is what it's all about. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.